Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha with Ice Cream Fitness here. Once again, it is Monday, so it is time for the Monday Q&A. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Having a little trouble holding that bicep shot today because I pulled one of my abs doing squats this morning during my heavy session. But I went ahead and I did my deadlifts and good mornings and everything despite pulling it, but it hurts like hell now, so I'm going to have to put ice on it a couple of times today and hopefully it will recover and I can film my max effort bench press session for you guys tomorrow. Well, let's get right into these questions. First question, can you post a mobility routine? I get asked this quite a bit but I've never addressed it in a video. There's no need for me to really make one because there's so many good ones out there and a basic mobility routine that I like to refer people to is called DeFranco's Agile 8, and it's by the famous athletic trainer Joe DeFranco, who some of you may or may not be familiar with. So that's what I generally recommend for people who need a basic mobility routine. You can find it on Google pretty easy. All right, next question. Hey Jason, my chest overpowers my delts, so I'm thinking of doing overhead press before bench in my routine. Does this sound reasonable? No, for the most part this doesn't sound reasonable to me because you are potentially shortchanging yourself overall development by doing a lighter movement first unless you are positive that you have a glaring weakness there. But it's better to address the weakness directly rather than risk losing overall size to try to focus more on a smaller muscle. I would go back and do more work for the smaller muscle. Now with delts, one of the problems you have is that if you're a natural lifter, people's standards for what delts should look like compared to, re to the rest of their physique get a bit skewed if they're looking at guys who are on a lot of gear because guys on gear simply grow delts easier and they honestly don't even really have to train them. If they want huge delts but not quite good enough to be winning shows, they don't even really have to train their delts for the most part. Their pressing and pulling will handle most of it. But natural guys simply need a lot more delt work and they're still not going to hit the same ratios of delt size versus their, a lot of their other muscles even if they incorporate delt work. So people get their ideals skewed a little bit by that. Now, what I would recommend is that go in and do more volume for your delts. After all of your heavy work, since you're probably an intermediate at this point, because if you're a novice, you don't need specialized work. But if you're an intermediate and you have true weak points developing, then you're gonna go in and do extra work for those weak points. And all intermediates have weak points. And so they need specialized work to address them. So go in and add some extra overhead pressing, do some face pulls, do some side laterals. Do whatever you need to do to bring up that lagging muscle group. But you do not need to necessarily neglect your heavier work to do this first unless you're, you have a very severe imbalance and you're reasonably advanced and you can afford to lose, say, some chest size or overall development for your delts. All right, next question. How to fix a muscle imbalance, i.e. the right lat is stronger and bigger than the left, and the same with the tricep. Uh, a couple of things I would address here. Obviously, triceps, it's very easy. Just do dumbbell work for your triceps. Cut out all of your barbell work, all of your cable pushdowns, and start doing dumbbell skull crushers. Behind the head dumbbell extensions, things where you can ensure equal load on each side, and hopefully that will balance it back out in addition to your pressing work. Now with lats, it can get a little more complicated. I would almost say the same thing, go in and do heavy one-arm dumbbell rows before you do your other lat work. But something else I would address a lot, particularly for guys who are using, say, deadlifts to build up their lats very heavily, that's also indicative of a potential spinal alignment issue. So you may want to go get checked out by a chiropractor and get lined up, and you might find that it starts balancing back out if you're using heavy, heavy, barbell movements like deadlifts to build your back up and you're noticing that imbalance. Because that will simply happen because the load will be shifted more to one side than the other if your spine is out of alignment. All right, next question. What's the difference between band face pulls and standard face pulls with a cable and rope attachment that makes them more effective? It has to do with peak resistance in the curve and when you're doing band face pulls, one, you can pull them apart a little more as you get to the face and you can with the bands, but more importantly, the strength curve it creates, it gives you more peak tension 
at peak attraction and that seems to be the real winner there. It, it's effectively turns it into almost a concentration curl for your rear delts in addition to the other benefits that face pulls have. So that really seems to be what it is. It, it's a more natural strength curve for the rear delt than the cable would give you. Alright, last question. Is it ever acceptable for a man to use the pussy pad on the bar when squatting? No, it is not acceptable for a man to use the pussy pad and it's not acceptable for a woman to use the pussy pad. It's not that difficult to build a little bit of a callus up on your shoulders or wear two layers of shirts. If I'm in a tank top, I'll go ahead and use a towel. But even lately, I just wear Under Armour underneath my t-shirt. And that should be enough padding for you to hold well over 500 pounds on your shoulders once you develop a little bit of a callus there in your normal bar spot. The problem with the pad is that not only does it not let you do this, it doesn't give you quite the same stable platform you need. It's a little more prone to slipping in some ways, and it doesn't let you set the bar correctly. So in the long term, I think it's dangerous because it doesn't teach you how to squat correctly. It never lets you squat correctly or set the bar correctly or consistency because of the, the padding. It kind of offsets it a bit, and so therefore it's actually in the long term it's dangerous. And I think any responsible gym owner needs to throw these out. And I honestly think gyms that have pussy pads available in their gyms should probably be sued or shut down. Just like gyms that have leg extension machines. Because these are things that over time contribute to long-term injuries from people using them chronically. Alright guys, that's really all I have to say on that one today. I'm going to try to get a second one of these out for you guys. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you next time.